Hello and welcome to the Rotherham Advertiser Sports Chat Podcast. Joining me around the table this week is Miller's correspondent David Beddoes. Good morning. And news into my club Hello. Gentlemen, uh, another defeat on the road for Rotherham United to mark their worst away start to a season in 95 years, Dave. Uh, Alan Stubbs now the worst start for a manager in the club's history. Um, and five losses on the bounce, first time since 2004-05, and we know how that ended. Dave Norwich, was it was it a three-one game? Was it that bad? It could have been three. It could have been more. In truthful, um, you know, I think the Millers pull that goal back later on through Dexter Blackstock, and, can, and the, you know Norwich just wobbled a little bit. Just a bit of doubt crept into the play. You know, Rotherham stayed in the game. Um, which they haven't managed to do time and again this season, so there is progress on that score. But you know the goals are still flowing in, and up front uh, there wasn't a lot to crow about either. To be honest, I mean, said that Norwich were very, very good, and I can't see them been in the championship for long. Where do where do where do Rotherham go from here? Because uh, they've, they've rightly they've played the top three teams in, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, pushing Huddersfield and Newcastle close a little bit off the pace against Norwich. Um, but before that, they played the two bottom teams and lost to them also. So, what, where are Rotherham right now? Are they a, a bottom of the table side? Are they in a false position? Should they have more points, as Stubbs has suggested, uh, or, or are they just a, a poor championship team at the minute? What? Well, I think the table tells you that, doesn't it? The league table spells it out. In fact, um, I'm quite surprised after the run we've been on that we're still only five points, you know, away from uh, the safety line. Um, I mean, you've got to judge Rotherham, really. I know we've played Cardiff teams like that, um, sort of a game or two down the line. Uh, games like Saturday at home to Reading, and then we're going to Ipswich the week after. We had a, a good start, as they normally have. Um, Rotherham have shown their improvement, but it's been against top-line size in these last three games, so a bit unfair to judge them in that way. Um, but, you know, we need to get a move on soon. Michael... Uh... Is Stubbs' job under immediate threat, do you think? Obviously, it's, it's all opinion at the moment, but do you think that, that the pressure's now coming down on him? Well, the second part, I would say, yes, the pressure, pressure is coming down on him. Um, the first part, I'd be very surprised if he was under threat. Um, what we have to remember in all this is that Tony Stewart's reputation is on the line as well. Um, he brought in, he, he pulled off something of a masterstroke by bringing in Neil Warnock last season. But Neil Riffin was a... An unmitigated disaster. We're standing, we're sitting here saying that Alan Stubbs was the worst manager in Rotherham's history in terms of his results. Five wins in 21 games for Neil Redford, from what I remember, was a pretty poor return. And that was down to Tony. Um, the fact remains that Alan Stubbs came in quite late on after Stewart and, and Warnock between them had dallied over whether or not he was going to stay or go. After which point, a lot of the players had gone and it would, would have been difficult to sell a club that had barely stayed up with a new manager, a new and experienced manager, you're leaving yourself little time and, and little um, availability of quality players at that point. I don't think it's just about stops. I mean, seeing this side, I don't think on the whole the players are good enough. Um, I think they're putting a shift in. You look at someone like John Taylor, dis- disallowed goal on Saturday, work really hard against Newcastle. He doesn't score goals. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, and, and Joe Newell tried really hard against Newcastle. He's not making things happen. Either the defence isn't good enough, hence the midfield's not good enough because they're tracking back and, they're, and there's no support for Danny Ward, or simply throughout the side, the quality of players aren't good enough. And Alan Stubbs it could be Mourinho and he wouldn't be getting... Well, this, this is the question, isn't it, Dave? Because, I mean, you look at Lee Frecklington and, and Joe Newell coming back into the team from long-term injuries. Uh, I think they'll both admit they're not fully up to speed yet. Yet they're still getting in the team in front of Will Vokes and... Uh, Jake Foster Kasky and Scott Allen and these types of players. So, so a half fit Joe Newell is better than Scott Allen. Where, where, where does that leave the Rotherham squad? Maybe not as strong as what we thought at the start of the season? No, it's not. I mean, he, he signed, generally, uh, Alan Stubbs has signed a particular type, hasn't he? Young, uh, sort of up and coming players. And maybe, yeah, you know, this season's a, a year too soon for one or two of them as well. Um, all, you, all you ask is that. Rotherham are competitive and give themselves a chance, which they've only really started. They've only done sporadically, haven't they? Um, and I take Michael's point that you know Alan Stubbs, it was, you know, he fielded it difficult past him when he came in, because uh, there'd been a delay at the end of last season, so he's had to overhaul the whole squad. But managers don't get the time these days, do they? They don't get enough time. But I mean, the club has had three managerial changes, hasn't it? In just over a year, this would be a fourth. 
and uh, there is a need for stability as well and sometimes chairman have to stay strong and you know weather these periods and see it is still early days. I hate to say it but it comes back a year on to never having replaced Arneson and Morgan. If you haven't got a kind of solid defensive core then you've got nothing to build on. I like, like, I like Kurt Broadfoot as a defender but he's not fit often enough and even when he is fit he doesn't seem to have long enough running the games uh, to get a partnership together with, with any kind of centre-half partnership. I think Dominic Wall's got a lot of potential as well. I think he could be could be a, a good uh, long-term signing if you, you could get grips into it. But the fact remains that this, this, there isn't really a team there. There's not a, a, a proper core of players that have played together year in, year out, like you, you would get with a, a solid and unsuccessful sign. Um, I have to say, I think that... Um, it's not despair yet. There are a lot of very poor teams in this division. You look, just look at the league table. The number of sides that have got four wins or fewer from the first 12 games. Um, having said that, though, I think Aston Villa have got a good chance of coming good under Steve Bruce. I'd be surprised if they got well and truly sucked into it. Um, so it's probably going to be six or seven others that, that we're going to be struggling against. And it is going to be games against the likes of Reading and Ipswich, mid-table sides, that it's going to be about where it, where it either stands or falls as a season. Yeah, they'll look awful on Saturday, by the way. Looking to get away with that against uh, Wolves. So Steve Bruce has got work to do there. Um, I think there's a lack of leadership probably in the Rotherham team. There's a lot of promise, a lot of youth, um, a lack of leaders. Obviously, we need Kurt Brofoot back. Just found out this morning that he's got another injury, a foot injury, so yeah. he's seen a specialist over that and there's no uh, time scale put on it yet. Yeah, I mean, in a way, you don't have to stray far from the Neil Warnock blueprint, do you, to have you know a settled back four and a bit of steel in front of it like we had last year with Richie Smallwood, Greg Alford. And, uh, you're, not allowed to say, you're not allowed to say that name around these parts, David. Uh, yeah. There's too many tears to eyes. But yeah. you know, if you get that, the Amy back in there, it was a big, strong physical presence along with Halford and you know Fre- Freckleton back on the ball with Brofoot in the back four. You've got more of a base, but we're not at that point yet, are we? Because of injuries. The irony is that he seems to be committed to this 500 field, and poor Danny Ward's trying his best up front without much relief. Well, it's the most prolific spell of his career. And <laughs> um, when Blackstock came on, within minutes he'd scored a goal and you wonder why you bring a player in, in like that if you're not is he not fit because why do you bring a player in like that to give you more physical presence up front is it just support to Danny Ward would it not be worth mixing things up again, a bit making the opposition have a bit more to think about by playing two up front yeah I think well th- that's true um, Izzy Brown and Ward have been doing okay so there's been no real pressure to bring uh, Dexter Blackstock in but I think he declined his claims on Saturday by scoring let, just to talk about the fans for a minute, because obviously the the relationship between Stubbs and the fans has been um, has been touchy in the past. One or two quotes that Stubbs has said that the fans haven't took too kindly to. There's been no chance of Alan Stubbs's Barmy Army or any of them sort of things. The relationship hasn't really materialised as of yet, um, and there's been one or two well documented boos at the end of the games as well. Do the fans play a big part in how much time Alan Stubbs gets to turn this round? And if so, when will the fans start turning the screw, Dave? I think Alan Stubbs plays a big part in uh, how long Alan Stubbs is going to be around, isn't he? Um, it, it, you know, if he lays the results out, lays the wins out, then it's not a problem. Things like this only get amplified when things aren't going well. You know, otherwise everything's okay. Absolutely, I think it's a bit of a red herring. I remember at Villa Park on the first away game of the season that they were singing um, Roberto Di Matteo's name, the Villa fans, which was bizarre. And I still find it a little bit premature that the Newcastle fans have got songs about Rafa Benitez but what, when they're not doing anything. What I'm, saying manager, is, what I'm saying is the fact that if there's that rapport there and Bill, are the fans more likely to give the manager a few more extra weeks because they're not so keen to see him Perhaps, Joe, you know, they, they're not going to start booing and turning on him. But as Dave says, it, it's down to what happens on the pitch. I don't think Tony Stewart is going to sack a manager because a few fans have got the manager's back. As I said, he's, he's laid his own reputation on the line again here by going for another young manager. You thought he might have been once a bit twice shy after the Redford experience. Um, and Stubbs has been, for the reasons we've, we've gone over, Stubbs has been less successful. So if they get a couple of wins together, People will, will not care whether or not Stubbs is waving in the game. And for all we know, he might want to wave a few more times. Well, uh, let's What's just... What's he got to be waving uh, about? He, uh, he could do with picking up his first win tomorrow night against Birmingham. 
away, Dave, and then it's Reading at home on Saturday. This run of, of these couple of games don't seem quite as daunting as the few that have come before, do they? No, in a way, no. I mean, Birmingham, I mean, it's like boxing Tyson Fury. They're so awkward, they don't get much away, they're well organised. I mean, said that, they slept at Forest in the on Friday night. They're another difficult opponent, not quite that top layer opponent they get with Newcastle and Norwich, but they're still difficult on their own ground, although Robin did turn over 2 0 last year. But the, so the next tier of club down, but it's still very difficult. And Reading are improved this season, aren't they? So it's getting easier, but not a lot easier. I can see it being um, slightly easier, as it were, given this midweek game. I think uh, a big crowd fully up for it on a, win- uh, on a Saturday night. Uh, a sat- Saturday afternoon, it might be quite intimidating for Rotherham. For all we know, I think you might get a slightly more muted experience on a Tuesday. I just have an sure. idea that it's one of those less of the spotlight on them um, games that you might. I think it might be one of those nick a point things. And they start nicking a point here and there away from home because they've been so wretched on the road. And that's going to breathe a bit of confidence into the side. Yeah. And just going back to, to Saturday briefly, I thought they were a little unfortunate that Wes Houlihan, who hasn't scored all season, um, produced an absolute worldie. I mean, if that had been the Premier League, we'd been seeing it over and over and over again, the way they turned defenders mm. twice and then slotted in the corner. Um, that was a, a, a brilliant piece of skill. And, and they have been a bit unfortunate. You think about Newcastle, um, Newcastle barely got out of third gear, but the goal this goal was an absolute worldie from Christian Atsu. So it's those fine margins. Um, I think rather than have got to make more chances than they've got to take some. Yeah. So I made that point in my report this week about you, know, you can work as hard as you like, but you just get that flash of quality that we've seen in the last two matches of Mulhan and then Atsu at the New York just before the break. And it undoes so much good work. But but, I'm afraid it's something that we are going to have to contend with. But it's like I was saying about maybe give a, a, a bit of a throw of a dice with Blackstock. Opposition very rarely score when they're not in your final, your own final third. So if we give, start to give teams more to think about in their own defensive third, then you've got fewer chances to think about in your own yeah. box. I think Rotherham as well been concentrating so much on shape and how they are off the ball. We've had this paranoia about conceding goals that maybe that's compromised that a bit. But we still have got a goal or two winners. That's a good thing. The irony is that you go back a couple of seasons, Rotherham's first, um, uh, first year in this league, and we were looking at players, as I said, like... Arneson and Morgan and, and Ben Pringle, who seem to be a high degree of quality. The irony being that they got promoted from League One and then a year later lost probably their three star players. And uh, I would say that they've struggled to replace any of those. Mm. We've seen the emergence, the further emergence of Lee Franklinton. But beyond that, I mean, you, you struggle to look at that side and think that player can play at a higher level mm. with Rotherham. Right, gentlemen, we'll, uh, we'll get your predictions now before we wrap up for tomorrow night's game against Birmingham. Dave, how do you see this one panning out? Are you an optimist? I'm always an optimist. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They've shown enough gumption and and effort in the last couple of games to, you know, go there and and keep it to for a one-all draw. Michael? (laughs) I love David's one-all the way draws. (laughs) (laughs) It'll come true eventually. I actually think that the most they can hope for is to keep a clean sheet and nick a nil-nil. They've only kept one clean sheet all season. I don't think it's actually going to happen. But I'm going to stick my neck out and say it's going to happen sometime and they're going to get a nil-nil because Birmingham have only scored 15 goals in the first 12 games. You heard it here first, Michael Upson says that Rotherham will get a clean sheet it's got, it's tomorrow it's at someday. Birmingham. <laughs> Do you agree or not? Let us know by tweeting us at Rod Tizer Sport. You can also tweet us with any of, uh, any of your views on Rotherham United and the upcoming games. But until we hear from you on there, we'll say thank you very much for listening. Thank you.